Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday night, about 10, 15 p.m. That's California time here, April 6, 2025. We've got Monday coming up tomorrow. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 1.1 in the California. A little bit of movement happening there on the Curl Kamchatka Trench with a 5.4 earthquake on the Earthquake 3D Globe. Let's go ahead and check that out. Looks fairly deep. Well, not too bad. 31 miles deep here into the Crow Kamchatka Trench is a major subduction zone there that's, uh, I think, pretty much overdue there for some large earthquake activity. Also, some movement here across the Japan area, somewhat deep as well, about 31 miles deep into that uh, Japan Trench area. As uh, far as any newer, larger activity goes across the region, uh, New Zealand's starting to show some uh, strain down here across the area, just north of Christchurch. Uh, got uh, a couple of earthquakes there happening early this morning and also this afternoon uh, stirring up there across the plate boundary. Got to watch New Zealand here because it is in a major boundary here where we can see some large earthquake activity. And there's been a lot of signs here of strain being produced here in the region. And it's obviously got a, p a potential here for some larger earthquake activity. Uh, it's 4.2. Looks like a couple fours in there. Some deeper activity as well that is associated uh, with the uh, Hikurangi subduction zone. Not visible on this map. You have to look at the oceanic crust here. See this? See these ridges here? That's a major subduction zone uh, capable of producing a mega quake there for the New Zealand region. And, uh, you know, obviously no one knows when it's going to happen, but it's been quite a while there since we've had any uh, big, big earthquake activity. Still seeing some aftershock sequences there across the Papua New Guinea area. That's, uh, you know, obviously common. Got about 46 earthquakes here. That's just the ones that are being reported. Got to remember for every four-pointer, well, say, for example, every six-pointer, there's going to be a certain number of five-pointers. For every five-pointer, it's going to be a certain number of four-pointers and so on. Obviously, the multitude of quakes increase as you go down. This is just what the USGS is showing here for about 46 earthquakes in the four range. The last one, a 4.6. So multitude of quakes are going down, the magnitudes as well. Um, I don't think we're going to see anything larger on here. It's been a couple days since that uh, 6.9 struck out here. But uh, we'll continue to watch this area in between here, in between the Fiji area, Tonga region. A couple earthquakes uh, today in the last 24 hours here. I should say 4.9. That's from last night. Any more recent 4.6 in the Solomon Islands, but it's been relatively quiet here across this seismic gap zone. So we'll still continue to keep an eye on that area for uh, maybe some movement. Alaska, nothing major going on, just a couple smaller quakes. Washington area, uh, looks like one or, one or two little aftershocks here following that 3.7 this morning outside of Greenwater, Washington. Uh, that is in the Cascades area, Cascade Mountains. Uh, not around any volcanoes. Uh, for the most part, though, things look pretty quiet up there. Aside from those, just a couple quakes. Oregon, pretty quiet as well. Northern California, nothing showing up here. Kind of find that hard to believe. But uh, let me check out the trimmer map here this evening. Cascadia trimmer being reported here from the PNSN network. That's the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. And uh, we got about 201 epicenters of trimmer. Just north there of Victoria, just a small amount, most of it here across the southern end, across the extreme southwestern corner of Oregon. Now, this is not volcanic tremor, but slow slip events that occur down into the subduction zone of the Cascadia. Nothing to report, though, as far as earthquake activity, but uh, the tremor, obviously, adding further strain into the locked area of the Cascadia. One earthquake here on the northern end of the San Andreas Fault today. Uh, nothing big. And, of course, we got the, this is the uh, Clear Lake Volcanic Field geothermal plants there in full swing producing earthquakes, but also producing that energy, green energy, so to speak. Uh, one earthquake on the Hayward Fault, a little one-pointer, nothing uh, nothing too big there. San Andreas Fault, as far as the park field segment, uh, had a number of earthquakes there this morning. Just outside of park field, um, nothing new to report there this afternoon. Just uh, kind of watching that region here. It's coming up here on a time period where we should be seeing a six-pointer happen on that soon. And, of course, there's always a little concern that that six-pointer there could trigger uh, the rest of the San Andreas Fault there in a full unzip. 
Uh, Bakersfield area, this is looking a little bit more active than normal here across this region around the Garlock Fault Shear Zone. So more than likely adding some strain up in this general fashion here as the uh, Pacific Plate kind of you know, brushes up there uh, in the uh, region of the San Andreas Fault. A couple earthquakes on the San Andreas Fault here, the southern segment. Got to watch these here. Uh, nothing major going on, but uh, some noticeable strain being produced out there today. Uh, 2.5 map and above, well, that pretty much removes all the earthquakes. Mostly microquakes, but doesn't matter. There's still earthquakes. It's just a number that us humans put in terms of earthquakes being felt compared to not being felt. Um, somebody mentioned here outside of, uh, was it Stagecoach here? That there's some type of data center out here. Uh, I don't know what kind of data center it is, but uh, there's some earthquake activity occurring out here across this area. About 22 earthquakes of very small magnitudes, but it's uh, you know a little swarm going on there. Just one of the areas of Nevada that has been swarming out here recently, including outside of Yerington. This is the area that had a 5.7 uh, a number of months back. Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up there on the map, but let's go double check the Yellowstone seismographs overview. And uh, we're looking pretty quiet out there. Not a whole lot happening. Mm, yeah, let's see. Oh, I just got an earthquake notification there on my phone. Let's see what we got. Oh, 3.1 there in Yearington. We were just talking about that, right? So that just came in. Uh, not updated on the map yet, but I'm sure as soon as I refresh this, there it is. 3.1. So things are still increasing out here across Nevada. Uh, you know, whether you want to consider this aftershock sequences there from the 5.7 that struck here, I, I consider this a, a very interesting area to study. I really want to go out here um, and do a little locate uh, on location event, but uh, kind of busy right now. Would be cool to go out there and investigate, see what's going on. But, uh, you know, the 5.7 struck up here in this area, and we've noticed a migrational pattern here um, to the south, closer to 95, where we're seeing most of the clustering going on there right now, including that 3.1. So uh, a span of uh, just a couple miles, but it's interesting here, the pattern that's taken place, a migrational pattern from north to south here. And I don't believe this is volcanic activity. Um just fault related but uh, it's hard to say exactly uh, where the faults are located out here USGS not really showing m nothing on the map here but I'm sure it's associated with this uh, Wasuck range there that's uh, there's a couple different segments that are um, positioned out here around the Arrington but that's pretty active right now so I don't think it's you know it you can call it aftershock activity from the 5.7, but it's obviously there's er increasing pressure out here that's causing the further earthquake activity. Uh, let's see. Texas, a couple oil fields out there getting hit. Really nothing major going on. New Madrid seismic zone, you know, it's been hammered. I think they got about 15 or maybe even 20 inches of rainfall out here in the last week across the New Madrid seismic zone. And this is one of the stations around the area. Uh, pretty quiet. You've seen that, right? Just the one I um, just refreshed off of. It's pretty quiet. And even in the last couple hours, it's still pretty quiet. So there's no earthquake activity occurring on the New Madrid seismic zone for now. Um, but I do like to watch and see how uh, a fault system behaves after getting so much rainfall, right? That could lubricate the system down below and maybe uh, produce some earthquakes. But right now, that's not the case. All right, uh, let's see what else we got. Nothing major going on across the rest of the globe. A little bit of movement here south of the Baja California area. That could enhance regions upstream for California. We'll watch that, though, overnight and tomorrow. Uh, most of the time, you know, it's, it's a good shot there that we'll see elevated activity following this type of movement down south here. So watch for migration northward. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Uh, one earthquake way up north from earlier. About 5.4. Uh, the rest of the globe here just uh, looks like a typical day for now. Pretty good clustering going on there across the Philippines southward. 
but that's you know the crunch zone i like to call it the crunch zone not not officially the crunch zone but it makes sense right where all the uh, plates and whatnot tend to collide and subduct and pull apart and it's just a very dynamic area space weather activity here uh we're going down going down 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 in terms of solar flare potential not really looking at anything major going on here um all the sunspots here have just been looking promising and then uh, nothing happens here not really too concerned with this area really not uh all that much going on with this newer sunspot either there's a clear-cut separation core there not uh, looking likely that we'll see anything here anytime soon in terms of larger flare activity and a look at the far side watch here shows uh well not a whole lot it looks uh doesn't look very promising out there in terms of anything uh flare potential these guys showing a 10 percent, probably about five percent chance or less for next flare i'm probably going to drop mine down here this evening to one percent or less i just don't see it there's not you know it's not even a five percent chance m flare maybe just maybe we'll see an m flare out here from the newer sunspot but uh i i don't know i not looking likely no major roars in the forecast 75 percent illumination there of the moon beautiful moon shot if you got a close range or a, a zoom camera right not close range but zoom camera there for the moon well it's a perfect phase there to see the uh, craters out there may have to go out there tomorrow night or something see if we can uh, catch some moon shots all right uh what else we got there for storm prediction center severe weather got a little break coming up there for the folks here it looks like that's i think that's good news right after all the severe weather out here recently uh for tomorrow for the monday time period a little bit of slight slight risk category out there across florida um uh, georgia south carolina we got some tornado potential five and two percent a little bit of wind uh not so much hail so a little break going on there, but I think severe weather will, will return out there across that region as we look here at the extended models right about, there's, that's not really a severe weather event, but right here, well, oh, where'd he go? Maybe right there? That's towards the 23rd. We'll have to watch that and see what happens here, but those, those folks deserve a break out there from all the crazy weather that's been going on for us tornado activity arkansas and this whole area just getting hammered with a lot of severe weather events all right folks um the seismograph stations out here look pretty quiet there's not a whole lot going on so we'll just watch those this evening or uh, overnight enjoy the rest of your sunday night out here i'm gonna call it monday morning is ringing i can hear my alarm clock already so I'm going to get a little sleep. Hope, hope everyone has a good evening. We'll see you guys back out here for the Monday morning update.